So in this video, we're going to look at calculating confidence intervals on a single sample. So we can calculate several kinds of confidence intervals. We can calculate a Z interval when both the mean and the population standard deviation is known. Uh, we can calculate a T interval when the population standard deviation is not known or for very small samples. And then the one proportion Z interval when we're calculating population proportion. Now we can find all of these confidence interval functions in our calculator under the stat menu. Um, if you scroll over to the test submenu, you'll find each of these listed. Uh, you have to scroll down a little bit. The Z interval starts at seven. The T interval is eight. And the one proportion Z interval is below that down at A. Now we're gonna start with our first example with the Z interval. Now, I wanna be clear, even though most textbooks start with the Z interval for calculating confidence intervals, um, this is actually something that we do very, very rarely uh, because we usually don't actually know the population standard deviation. Now, there are certainly cases where we might know that. Uh, for instance, uh, if you uh, work for the Educational Testing Service, for instance, uh, they have every test that they've ever given. And so they know what the population standard deviation is and they can't report it out. However, in most circumstances out in the real world, in a more natural and non-artificial setting, we don't actually know the population standard deviation. So this uh, Z interval, we're gonna go through the example, but I do wanna caution everyone that this is like the least common test that you're ever going to do for confidence intervals. But let's look at our example. Um, in this case, we have a random sample of 50 pigs with a mean weight of 86.5. The population standard deviation is known to be 7.5 pounds. Calculate the 90% confidence interval for the population mean. Now, because the problem said specifically that the population standard deviation is known and the sample size is sufficiently large, we can use the Z interval. So we will go to stat and then arrow down or hit uh, to the in Z interval or hit seven and it'll take you there directly. Um, and then under the options that are available to you, you can enter data if you have data in your list. Or in this example, since they just gave us the summary statistics, scroll over to stats and make sure that one's highlighted, hit enter to highlight it and then we will enter the values that are available to us. So here, the standard deviation, notice it's sigma. That's the population standard deviation. We put in the 7.5 that was given to us. X bar is the sample mean, 86.5. The sample size is N, and the confidence level that the problem asked us for is a 90% confidence interval. And so that's where we're specifying the C level and again, you should enter it as a decimal, not as 90. And then scroll down finally to calculate, and it will spit this out on the screen for you with the confidence interval bounds, and then it will restate the mean and the sample size. Now, if we have data, then we definitely need to use uh, the t-test because we probably don't have the population Meet the population standard deviation. So in this case, consumer reports gave the following information about life hours of size AA batteries in toys. So these are our, this is the data, and we're going to assume that the population of battery lives is approximately normal, and we want to find a 95% confidence interval for the mean life in hours for all AA batteries used in toys based on this data. Now, since sigma is not provided to us, when we do our calculation, we're going to use the data's standard deviation. And because of that, um, both because of the small sample size and because the sigma is unknown and we're estimating it, calculating an estimate from an estimate is a little bit more, um, allows for more variability. And so the T interval is designed to account for that slightly greater variability. So this is when we would go to the T interval. So First things first is we would go to the lists and we would enter the data in list one. 
Um, I have another video on entering data into the lists if you're not aware of how to do that. Um, but then when you've entered the data into list one, then go to the stat menu again and scroll over to tests. And then we would choose the T interval. Um, and then we would select data. Now, again, if you have summary statistics in your problem instead of raw data, then you can select stats. But here, you don't need to calculate the statistics. Uh, the calculator will actually do the statistical calculations for you since you have the data. Then, so we're going to select data, specify the location of where you entered the data, which here is list one. And then the frequency will be one by default. And then select your C level. Again, here it's 0.95 for a 95% confidence interval. And then select calculate when you're ready to do the math. And it will spit out on the screen not only the confidence interval, but it will also tell you the center of the confidence interval, the mean that it calculated from the data. And it will tell you the standard deviation that it calculated from the data. And it will repeat the sample size. Now, again, keep in mind, you can do the t-interval with stats. Um, but again, unless the problem says that it is the population standard deviation, don't use the, the z-interval. The z-interval, again, generally speaking, is a very uh, limited scenario that actually happens in the real world. In most cases, it is the t-interval, either with statistics or with data that you'll be calculating. And then the third kind of confidence interval we can calculate is for population proportions. Now, one way to identify population proportion problems is that they not only don't give you the raw data, but they don't give you standard deviation information at all. Um, in order to do any calculation on means, you have to have both the mean and the standard deviation. But for proportions, you just need the proportion because the confidence interval margin of error is calculated from the proportion. So you'll notice that there's no standard deviation mentioned in these questions. Suppose a random sample of 40 community college students allow, shows that 25% have enrolled in one or more online classes. Calculate 92% confidence interval for the population proportion. Now, to do this, we were going to go to, uh, we don't have a choice in the proportion one uh, for data or stats. So it's just summary statistics. So we would go to the stat menu and then scroll all the way down to A, the one prop Z interval. Uh, it may be easier to find this by actually scrolling up from the top of the list because it's actually very close to the bottom of the list. Um, and then enter the number of successes necessary. Now, um, if you do not have the um, number of responses, so sometimes they'll say, uh, suppose a random sample of 40 community college students shows that 16 of them have enrolled in one or more online classes. Um, okay, so then that's X, so you could put X in here. But if they give you just the percentage, you would multiply the sample size by the percentage. And what you would need to do is to make sure that your result is a whole number. This will not work if your result is not a whole number. If it's a decimal of some sort, the calculator will object to that. Uh, it won't actually run at all. So you can multiply the sample size by the per percentage they've given you, but it's possible that the percentage they've given you is itself rounded, and so you won't, or the sample size is weird, and you won't get a perfectly whole number. Uh, you, If you don't get a perfectly whole number, you will have to go back and round it manually. Um, but once you have this whole number X here, put in your sample size, set your confidence level again as a decimal and then press calculate and it will run through the calculation for you and it will spit out your confidence interval. It is in proportions, so it is in decimals. Um, so this would be like 13% and almost 37%. It will give you your P hat, which is just restating this percentage. Uh, if you didn't have it in the problem, it will recalculate, it'll calculate it for you. And then of course it will restate the sample size. Now I will note that in general, um, this confidence interval is as big as it is because proportion problems tend to need much larger sample sizes 
in order to get any sort of reasonable um, confidence interval width.